Hi everyone. Welcome back to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at ilopathology.com. In continuation with the series on diseases of kidney or pathology of kidney, we were discussing about cystic diseases of kidney, right? In my earlier session, in my previous session, I had talked about autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease and in today's session, I will be describing autosomal recessive polycystic kidney disease. We will look into what is autosomal recessive polycystic kidney disease, look into the epidemiological aspects, the pathogenesis, the morphological features, clinical features and a bit about management and complications. Now, autosomal recessive polycystic kidney disease is also referred to as childhood polycystic kidney disease is also a hereditary disorder just like autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease. Usually, they are categorized into perinatal, neonatal, infantile and juvenile forms based on the prints of the disease manifestations in children. Of these four categories, the perinatal and the neonatal forms are more common. They often present at birth. No, most of them succumb to death because of renal failure. They are one of the most common causes of heritable infantile cystic renal disease, autosomal recessive polycystic kidney disease and the incidence is around 1 in 20,000 to 40,000 live births. Pathogenesis, we saw that in autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease, the genes involved are PKT1 and PKT2, right? And in this case, it is the mutation of PKHB1, which is on the chromosome number 6. Mutations of this gene, this gene is very highly expressed in adult and fetal kidneys. Of course, they are also expressed in liver and pancreas. What it encodes is, it encodes a protein called fibrocystin. Okay? This is an integral membrane protein which is localized to the primary cilium of tubular cells. And the function of this protein is in collecting duct and the biliary differentiation. Collecting duct in kidney, biliary differentiation in liver. Now, again, I told you in the earlier, in, in, in my previous session, I talked about this, right? This is a single non-motile primary cilium which acts as a mechanosensor where it senses the urine flow which also regulates the calcium inside the cell. In this particular case, the PKHD1, you know, encodes for the protein called fibrocystin, which I told you it has a role in collecting duct and biliary differentiation. In this case, collecting duct differentiation. So, always the disease in this case involves predominantly the collecting duct. Now, the defects of PKHD1 results in abnormal or absent function of the fibrocystin which further results in circumferential proliferation of epithelial cells. What epithelial cells? Epithelial cells of the collecting ducts. And because of the circumferential proliferation of epithelial cells, finally it results in the formation of cyst. And this cyst can detach from the tubule once they reach a certain size and then you have cyst throughout the kidney. Okay, There is no active secretion here. Morphologically, Let's take autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease. Here also, the kidneys are bilaterally enlarged and can achieve enormous sizes. Now, look at this. But unlike in autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease, this has a smooth external surface. This is bosselated because it's a fetal kidney. Okay, It has a smooth external surface. Unlike what you saw there was multiple cysts, right? And then they retain the shape of the kidney. Okay. In the dominant one, you have multiple cystic nodules all over the kidney surface, right? And on the cut surface, which is very, very characteristic, it shows the renal parenchyma, which is diffusely replaced by very tiny tubular cysts, okay? And around each of these cysts measure around 1 to 2 mm in diameter. Remember, in autosomal dominant one, we saw cysts which can reach up to 4 cm. Whereas here, the cysts are around 1 to 2 millimeter in diameter 
and the cortico medullary junction is often indistinct you can make out but then it is not there is no clear cut differentiation between a cortex and a medulla because the cysts are seen throughout the renal parenchyma okay and each of these cysts are radiating linearly from the medullary area to the cortex okay all these are radiating cysts from the medulla to the cortex and surface and because of these you know tiny cystic uh, uh, areas throughout the kidney it's also called as spongy appearance and remember the dilated or elongated channels they are present at right angles to the cortical surface the characteristic cut surface of autosomal recessive polycystic kidney disease microscopically they are the ones which affect the collecting tubules right that because i know that because i have told you that the uh, fibrocystin is for the differentiation of the collecting ducts the cells of the collecting ducts right and that's why reason that's the reason why the manifestation is more often in the collecting tubules the dilatation is often cylindrical or saccular of all the collecting tubules and there will be uniform lining of cuboidal cells of these cystically dilated tubules the liver also can have cyst along with portal fibrosis and bile duct proliferation clinically if it is perinatal or at birth you know because of the massive enlargement of the kidneys the baby can develop respiratory distress due to pulmonary hypoplasia and can even lead to death renal dysfunction and hypertension is often a manifestation in the neonatal period neonatal period you can also have this respiratory distress if they have pulmonary hypoplasia whereas the infantile and juvenile forms you know they often present with failure to thrive or even growth retardation because of you know secondary due to altered nutritional status in these patients they can also present with urinary tract infections they can present with hematuria or even renal osteopathy if the liver is involved predominantly then they can also present with variable degree of congenital hepatic fibrosis how do you manage these patients usually symptomatic nothing can be done if it is neonatal and perinatal all you have to do is a proper respiratory support or a nutritional support and so on if in the in the older children you know if they manifest with hypertension treat hypertension by using renin angiotensin aldosterone system blockers okay cause of death in these kids i told you usually because of pulmonary hypoplasia and insufficiency this is usually seen in neonatal and perinatal period around 40% of the cases is because of that and of course patients you know can go on to live up to 20 years of age they will be having progressive renal failure hypertension hepatic fibrosis they can manifest with portal hypertension and its complications and finally end stage renal disease so this is all about autosomal recessive polycystic kidney disease which is also referred to as a childhood polycystic kidney disease thank you for watching if you have liked this video hit the like button do comment if you have anything to ask if you find this video useful do consider subscribing and do not forget to share with your friends in my next section next session in my next session i will be discussing further a few more cystic diseases of kidney particularly the medullary cystic diseases till then take care bye bye